our lecture for this week, right? So as shown in your uh, screen right now, we have already, we will actually start a new chapter, another new chapter, chapter six, right? So this chapter is also not a long chapter. It's relatively easy. Just that again, uh, Similar to chapter five, uh, chapter six is correlated as well to the other chapters that you have learned previously. So it's, it's not a, a chapter that you can do by itself. It's a chapter that is also correlated to the others. One of which uh, the information that you use in chapter six, right? You will do certain calculation, okay? Or basically I can summarize for you. Chapter six, you will learn another equation, okay? So it is a long equation. Uh, and to address specifically when you have a reaction, of which there are temperature changes during the reaction. So if you realize uh, all this while we learned until chapter 5 last uh, Tuesday, we only address a reaction of which there are no changes in the temperature during the reaction. But as you know, this is not necessarily true. Sometimes during the reaction, the temperature may change, meaning your reaction temperature is no longer the same as your inlet temperature. Okay, so how do we address this in the equation and why this become another issue or another challenge in our calculation when we are designing reactor? Okay, so again, to repeat, uh, chapter 6 is to, to address when we have reaction where there are changes in the temperature. Right, okay, so first of all, uh, you may wonder why, how does this uh, change of temperature affects your reactor design? Okay, so we know reaction may have temperature change, but how is it correlated to your reactor design? Okay, so if you see from the slide, you can see that temperature will actually affect the reactor design in terms of the volume of the reactor. Because you remember previously, we talked about uh, finding the reactor volume for flow reactor. It also can affect um, the reaction time if you're talking about batch reactor. Okay, so this sounds very general. We say it affects, but in what sense of the calculation that this will affect? Okay, so uh, let me give you an example of a scenario. Okay, let's say you have a CSTR. Okay, but before I forget, right? When we talk about addressing the change of temperature during the reaction, we will specifically uh, concentrate or focus on the application in a CSTR. Okay, but of course, later on as well, lah, uh, batch dengan PFR also, we will address the same issue. Okay, so let's say we have a CSTR. It's an exothermic liquid reaction. So by now, you already know exothermic, endothermic reaction, right? Exothermic uh, reaction where heat is released during the reactions. You may have endothermic reactions where heat is needed for the reaction to occur. Okay, so let's say this is an exothermic liquid reaction, meaning during the reaction, uh, the, re uh, the reaction will release heat. So automatically, if you release heat or you supply heat, but either way, the temperature will then change, meaning your outlet temperature is no longer, or your reaction temperature is no longer the same as your feed temperature. So feed temperature are always the temperature uh, of the mixture before the reaction takes place. When we talk about reaction temperature, ke, outlet temperature is the react the temperature of the mi mixture when the reaction is taking place or has taken place. Okay. So let's say in this example, we have a CSDR, exothermic liquid reaction, first order. Okay, so occurs adiabatically. So another new concept that you have to learn, or uh, probably you have already learned in previous uh, courses, we have adiabatic. So adiabatic essentially means no heat loss or gain in the system. Okay, so that's just sekarang dia adalah adiabatic, uh, di mana there's no heat loss or gain in the system. Okay, so you know that if I have a CSTR, uh, design equation here to find the volume standard lah, volume CSTR equals to FA not X. This is for single CSTR per minus RA. Okay, so let's say example, this reaction is first order with respect to A. So minus RA equals to KCA. Okay, so this is just example to, to explain to you why non-isothermal uh, reaction affects our reactor design. Okay, so let's say sekarang, 
you don't uh, if you remember all this one when we learn until chapter five we always address that the reaction is isothermal meaning you are safe to assume ah uh, kalau saya bagi kamu fit temperature or you know the fit temperature the reaction temperature will be the same as well when it's isothermal so in that case kamu dah boleh terus kira nilai k sebab saya salah i always teach you k value is affected by the reaction Kan? Okay, so we know that K is affected by reaction through this Arrhenius equation. Arrhenius explains that the value of K equals to A, frequency factor, exponential uh, minus EA per RT. Okay, so tengok nilai K akan bergantung kepada nilai temperature. Okay, so sebelum ni kamu tak payah uh, you don't have to worry much. Kamu terus, kamu either, kamu dah tahu fit temperature, kamu dah boleh terus kira nilai K. Sebab kita tahu reaction temperature sama dengan fit temperature. Tapi sekarang in our problem when we have non isothermal, kita dah tak boleh tahu dah nilai K itu melainkan kita tahu suhu tindak balas. Tapi masalahnya sekarang because it's non isothermal, suhu tindak balas saya dah dah lain daripada suhu fit saya. So this become the challenge. If I do not know my reaction temperature, I cannot get my value of K. If I cannot get the value of K, definitely lah I cannot calculate the volume of the reactor. So that becomes one problem. Okay, next one. Okay, uh, we know that uh, we always have to correlate the concentration of A in terms of Ca naught in bracket 1 minus X. Kita selalu kalau kita nak cari outlet concentration of any compound in our reaction, we will always correlate with Ca0 dan X. So this one, kalau you are not too sure, you have to refer back in chapter 3 where I already taught you how to correlate concentration with conversion and initial concentration. So let's say I combine equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. Okay, so sekarang dia akan menjadi volume CSTR equals to FA not X per, instead of writing now K, saya dah tak boleh tulis nilai K sebab saya tak tahu suhu tindak balas saya disebabkan my reaction temperature will be different from my fit temperature. So the K I replace in terms of Arrhenius which is A exponential negative EA per RT. CA now becomes CA naught in bracket 1 minus X. Okay. So if you realize now, okay, I always tell you kalau kita nak solve mathematical equation, okay, kita kena bilangan pemboleh ubah dan bilangan uh, persamaan harus sama atau uh, Bilangan persamaan, your number of equation must be equal or more than your unknown. So, kalau kamu, you have more unknown than the number of equation that you have, kamu takkan dapat solve that problem. Okay, so now the problem becomes is that on my uh, right hand side, volume lah. Okay, saya nak cari volume. On my right hand side sekarang, saya ada beberapa pemulih ubah yang saya masih tak tahu. Okay, so what is that? Okay, first, FA0 kita tahulah. Initial molar flow rate kita tahu. Kita nak buat tindak balas. Uh, kita akan set dah initial molar flow rate. So let's say I dah tahu initial molar flow rate in a reaction because I can set what is my desired initial molar flow rate. So FA0 is okay. Okay, X is and unknown sebab saya masih tak tahu lagi conversion dalam reaktor saya. So, I have already one unknown. So, you got the bottom. Okay, frequency factor, expon uh, expo frequency factor dengan expon uh, activation energy is something that kita dah tahu as I taught you before. As long as you know the reaction, okay, dia adalah terikat kepada tindak balas itu. So, katakan the reaction is between A to produce B, regardless you run at what temperature ke, you run at which kind of reactor ke, asalkan dia adalah tindak balas kompak A menghasilkan B, exponential factor and activation energy adalah, eh sorry, frequency factor and activation energy is always the same. So, in this scenario, I can find from literature, I can really know A and E. -A. Okay, so CA0 pun sama. I can already know, I can know CA0 because I can set the initial concentration. Okay, so I forget one unknown yang kita masih tak tahu adalah temperature. Because remember, iso is non-isothermal reaction. Means temperature tu saya tak tahu. 
Okay, so now you can see on my left, my right hand side, saya ada dua unknown lagi yang saya tak boleh solve which is conversion and temperature. Meaning if these two I still cannot solve, I can never get the volume of your reactor. For example, CSDR. Okay, so this comes a uh, grow of where we introduce another equation. So saya kata kalau you have mathematical problems, if you find that you have banyak unknown tapi equation tak cukup, you have to figure out what are the equation that you can use. So in this situation, the same. We have to figure out another equation that can assist us to solve this problem because I have Two, I have two unknown that I cannot solve, X and temperature, and that's why I cannot find the volume. Okay, so we will then learn uh, an equation that will correlate ataupun yang mencari perhubungan di antara temperature dan conversion. Maksudnya, let's say you have your desired conversion, you can calculate and know what will be the reaction temperature. Or the other way around, let's say kalau saya set Reaction temperature saya harus berada at this temperature. What conversion I may achieve? Either one scenario, you will still use the same equation. Maksudnya katakan kalau kamu dah ada X, you use that equation to find temperature. Or you may know the temperature, you use that temperature value to find X. Okay? So this equation that I mentioned is actually called as energy balance equation. Okay, You have previously taken energy balance okay you may have heard uh, of course you have done energy balance and this equation is actually derived from the simple concept of our first law of thermodynamics so you have already taken uh, thermodynamics or you are taking it right now you already understand our first law of thermodynamics okay so from this simple concept of the first law of thermodynamics okay they have found a correlation between temperature of your reactor and the conversion in your reactor okay so to save your effort or to save the energy you do i will not explain on the derivation sebab bayangkan just from the very basic first law of the thermodynamics which state that energy cannot be created or destroyed can only change form Okay, from that one sentence, they will they will successfully they have successfully derived an equation which you are seeing in your screen right now that correlates again the two important parameter which is temperature and conversion T and X. Tapi kalau kamu tengok equation dia panjang kan sebab remember dia address the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, so this equation, as always, is uh, with similar uh, with other equation that I've explained previously. It is provided to you. Tetapi, if you can see this equation, first of all, is very long. Second, you can see there are many unknowns yang kamu kena solve dulu. Sebab ingat, kalau satu equation sama ada Persoalannya adalah bila saya beri katakan I give you temperature, you find conversion or vice versa. Let's say I give you conversion, you find the temperature. Tapi you will, you will probably ask me, tapi ada banyak lagi unknown yang kita dalam equation ni, right? Okay, that's the challenge. Equation ni panjang. Ada lagi unknown dalam equation ni yang kamu kena solve. Most of the equations, most of the unknown tu kamu kena solve dahulu. Then bawa masuk ke dalam equation yang panjang ini. So chapter 6 is not difficult. Masalahnya equation tu panjang. Then akan ada sub equation lagi that you have to use to find each of the unknown. Baru kita boleh solve the long equation. And don't forget, this long equation will equals to zero. Okay, baru kita boleh solve lah equation dia. Okay, so I will explain subsequently what does all this unknown means. Okay, right. So we will go one by one. Okay, so first of all, kita start dengan yang paling depan sekali di bahagian kiri saya which is your Q. Okay, so Q pun kalau kamu ambil temu dalam ni, kamu dah ambil energy balance, CPP, kamu dah selalu dengar this perkataan Q, this symbol Q. So Q is always in chemical engineering, we always correlate it to heat or enthalpy pun boleh juga lah. Tapi normally we will call it as heat. So in this uh, scenario, what does heat, what does Q means? Okay, so Q is heat added to the reactor when it is necessary to heat up a reaction. 
So let's see, kalau dalam senario case reaction kamu, di mana dia adalah endothermic reaction of which it need heat, okay, for the reaction to occur, naturally we will supply heat to the reactor. So for example, kalau kamu buat lab, kalau uh, for those who dah buat batch reactor, if you realize your your reactor will have an outer vessel, we call it as heating jacket, of which our heating fluid was water. Kita flow dalam heating jacket tu supaya kita akan dapat membekalkan haba kepada reactor kita uh, be, uh, using that heat uh, heat transfer fluid which is water. So the amount of heat or amount of energy that you supply to the reactor is what we call as Q. Okay. Tapi kamu pun ingat kan, pengiraan Q ni tak straightforward. It really depends on what, what types of system, what type of heat transfer material, so on and so forth. Okay, so to make it specifically, okay, in our case, we will address for CSTR only. Okay, so katakan kita nak kira berapa banyak heat dibekalkan ke dalam sistem saya. If I use a CSTR, the Q amount is given by an equation which is equals to UA in bracket TA minus T. So sekarang kamu faham kenapa saya kata kita ada main equation yang panjang di atas dan kita ada lagi sub equation. So maksudnya dalam pengiraan ni sebelum saya nak kira nilai Q yang di atas ini ataupun saya nak ganti nilai Q itu saya kena kira dulu nilai Q itu menggunakan sub equation as shown in the box, in the yellow box. Okay, so what is U, what is A, what is TA, what is T? So U is the overall heat transfer coefficient of the jacket. When I talk about jacket, I mean the heating jacket. So, apakah heat transfer coefficient jacket itu adalah nilai U kamu. A is your heat transfer area or we can also call it heat exchange area. So, let's say kalau kamu menggunakan steam as your heating uh, medium, okay, that will be the steam jacket area lah. Okay, so again, if your heating uh, medium is steam, therefore A is also referring to the steam jacket area. Okay, next, so you will see TA. So what's TA? TA is your heat transfer fluid inlet temperature. There lah uh, inlet temperature of your heat transfer fluid. Bukan inlet temperature of your reactant but the inlet temperature of your heating fluid. So katakan kamu guna water, berapakah suhu air yang kamu akan salurkan dalam kamu punya heating jacket. Okay, so if you use steam, so you become jacket steam saturation temperature. So if let's say we use steam, then it refers to your jacket steam saturation temperature. And lastly, you will see T. So T is your reaction temperature. Okay, so T suhu tindak balas. So T semasa tindak balas tu berlaku, berapa suhunya? That will be T. Berbeza dengan TA. TA adalah suhu of your heat transfer fluid. Okay, so kalau kamu perasan dalam equation ni, dia akan address sebagai TA minus T. Maknanya bermaksud, suhu heat transfer fluid kamu naturally must be higher than your reaction temperature. Logik lah sebab kamu tahu heat transfer is not 100% efficient. Maksudnya katakan kalau saya nak panaskan reaktor saya pada suhu 100, katakan saya nak T saya 100 Celsius, TA saya mesti lebih tinggi daripada 100 sebab kita kena address yang heat transfer tu tak mungkin akan efficient dan 100% pemindahan haba itu akan berlaku. Okay, so that's the part. Kamu kena faham apa itu TA, apa itu T. Right, so next. Okay, we will go to the next uh, terms of the equation. Okay, the next one is WS. So you can see the second unknown in my equation is WS. So WS, we call it as workshop or basically the work that is done in your system. Okay, katakan, kata kita nak address untuk CSTR, that will be the work done by the stirrer. Kalau kita cakap pasal PFR, okay, PFR will use turbine to pump the flow. That is also considered the work done by the system. So, workshop ni, pengiraannya tak adalah formula. If there's value, the value will be given to you. However, most of the time, 
the work done by the system is relatively small in comparison to the other types of uh, energy or heat supplied to the system. So most of the time, WS is deemed negligible. Sebab maksudnya, biasanya nilai Q dan nilai yang selepas ini adalah jauh lebih besar daripada nilai WS ini. So maknanya, kalau kita masukkan nilai WS ni pun, dia tak mengganggu sangat ataupun it will not much affect the calculation that we can deem it negligible. Okay, so if you want to ask, macam kita nak tahu dia negligible atau tidak, so in assessment ke, in test ke, in exam, if it's deemed negligible, I will, as I will write it clearly. Okay, you may assume WS is negligible. So, maksudnya kamu boleh letaklah WS tu sebagai kosong. Okay, alright. Kalau tak, I will give you the value of the WS workshop. Alright, okay. Next one. FA0, kamu dah biasa lah kan? Initial molar flow rate of A. Very easy. You get the value, initial molar flow rate of A, you can replace straight away. So next one, another unknown that you may not be familiar. You can see the big sign, mathematical sign. Okay, it looks like an E, but we always call it as summation or synonym to summation, we call it total or summation of Theta I C P I. Okay, so this small i refers to species. Okay, species in your system. So theta I C P I, the i itself refers to all the species in your system. So apa itu maksudnya summation theta I C P I? Okay, so kalau you talk about theta, uh, theta, you have remembered, I taught you before, uh, Untuk stoichiometric table, untuk uh, design reactor, you always, sometimes you may need to find theta B. So, kalau kamu remember, kalau konsep theta B adalah ratio of initial amount of your reactant B over reactant A. Dan theta sentiasa merujuk kepada initial amount. So, maksudnya dia hanya refers to if you it only refers to compound that exists initially in the reaction before it takes place okay contohnya if you have two reactant reactant a reactant b maka akan adalah theta b which is can be equals to let's say initial mole fraction of b over a initial molar flow rate of b over a initial concentration of b over a so on and so forth so it can be y b not per y a not c b not per c a not f b not per f a not okay tu benda kamu dah familiar Jadi kamu pun belajar, kalau katakan in your system, initially ada inert. So it is possible, initially your system may have inert. So kamu pun boleh kira theta i, i merujuk kepada inert saya. So contohnya, you if you have inert, you can calculate theta i equals to y i not per y a not, c i not per c a not, f i not per f a not, so on and so forth. So kalau ada inert, ada Katakan kompon tu ada waktu asal sama ada reactant B ataupun inert, kamu dah boleh kira nilainya, nilai theta itu. So, naturally, the summation of theta I CPI, again, this I merujuk kepada species, bukan inert eh. It refers untuk kepada semua pengiraan yang ada, yang untuk kompon yang ada pada waktu asal reaction or for compound that exists initially in the system. Okay, and if it's calculated as, okay, before I go forward, I assume you already know as well CP. Okay? So CP is heat capacity at constant pressure. Kan kita ada CP, kita ada CV. CV, heat capacity at constant volume. But in this sense, we are talking about CP, heat constant at, uh, heat capacity at constant pressure. So theta I CPI refers to, again, ada satu lagi formula, sub formula. Tetapi sub formula ni adalah formula yang tak 
fix. Okay. Macam tadi untuk mencari Q formula tu saya beri sebab regardless tindak balas macam mana pun pengiraan Q adalah sama. Tetapi the calculation for theta i CPI, this equation is not provided to you because the equation may and will change according to your reaction. So for example, let's say your reaction on your left hand side, I have two reacted A and B and I have product C and D. So the summation of theta i CPI will equal to technically theta A CPA. Okay, tapi kamu tahu kan theta A adalah satu sebab theta A will be y A not per weight, y A not, uh, f A not per f A not, c A not per c A not, so on and so forth. Dia masih satu. So that's why kita tak tulis theta A, kita terus tulis CPA means merujuk kepada heat capacity of A. So kamu tahu kan setiap kompang dia ada nilai heat capacity dia tersendiri. So kamu kalau katakan dia beri dalam test or SM, I will provide you with the value of the CP for compound A. So kamu ganti je nilai CP untuk compound A. Okay, next. Because we have reactant B in your system, so we must plus theta B CPB. Okay, so theta B refers to the theta B that you are very familiar with. But now you must multiply first with heat capacity of compound B. Okay, so katakanlah compound B tu heat capacity dia 4,000 kJ per mole. Katakan theta B tu 2. So, 2 darab 4,000 kJ per mole tambah dengan CPA tadi yang kita pun dah tahu nilai dia. Dan if and only if you have inert in your system, then you will have to plus theta I CPI. This big I refers to your inert. So your inert compound tu katakanlah nitrogen gas ke so on and so forth. You kira dia punya theta inert which you are very familiar with and you multiply with the heat capacity of that inert compound. Okay. Next. The operational Mathematical operational for this summation, kalau kamu tahu when we talk about summation, jumlah, kita akan sentiasa tambah, tambah, tambah. Tak ada tolak, tak ada tak ada tolak, tak ada darab, tak ada bahagi. Dia mesti sentiasa tambah, tambah, tambah. So we call it as summation, jumlah. So you just add, add, add. Tak payah tolak, tak payah bahagi, tak payah darab. Okay, next. On your right hand side, let's say now your reaction is only one reactant to produce two product. Okay, therefore, your summation theta I CPI will equal to CPA, the same, tak ada theta A sebab theta A itu satu. Dan if you have inert, then you will plus theta I CPI. So you realize that in this case, kita tak kira untuk B. Why? Because in the second case, B is no longer reactant, B is a product. But let's say, in test or exam, kamu confuse atau kamu keliru. You just remember, katakanlah untuk kes yang di mana reactant dia adalah hanya A. Okay, tapi kamu confuse, saya kena kira tak theta B, C, P, B. You just remember, kalau dia bukan reactant dan dia bukan inert, kamu takkan dapat kira theta B tu. Sebab theta B merujuk kepada amount asal compound B terhadap compound A. So kalau compound B tu tak wujud pada waktu asal sebab dia produk, you can never calculate theta B. Kalau theta B tu kosong, darab dengan CPB automatically pun kosong. Okay, so you have an avenue to avoid uh, mistakes if you understand the concept of nilai theta tu hanya boleh dikira jika compound itu exist initially before the reaction takes place. Okay, so done on summation theta i CPI. So the challenge of this equation, uh, this question is that macam lah macam saya katakan, kamu kena betul faham uh, dia ada equation panjang, dia ada sub equation lagi. So kena faham betul-betul macam mana dia akan digunakan dalam penyiraan kamu. Okay, so next one. You have T and T not. Okay, kita ada jen, uh, sorry, kita ada three different, actually empat jenis T yang berlainan dalam equation kita. So that become another challenge. Sebab nanti maklumat dia ada banyak maklumat in terms of temperature. You get confused which temperature is for which part of the equation. So sebelum ni kamu dah masa kita kira Q, kita dah kenal T A. T A heat transfer fluid punya inlet temperature. Ok, 
Okay, suhu kamu punya medium pemanasan reaktor kamu. Katakan kamu guna air ke, kamu guna minyak ke, suhu awal uh, tra heat transfer fluid tu adalah kamu punya TA untuk mengira Q. Same time, kamu pun ada kenal T. T is your reaction temperature. Suhu tindak balas kamu. Sebab dia sekarang dah non isothermal. Suhu tindak balas dah tak sama dengan suhu. Uh, suhu tindak balas dah tak sama dengan suhu awal ataupun suhu asal tindak balas kamu. Okay, dan Next, T not. So, T not naturally kamu tahu kan anything with not is always refers to keadaan... Uh, Parameter itu pada keadaan di mana tindak balas belum berlaku lagi. Ataupun uh, keadaan di mana masa tindak balas adalah kosong. So, T not refers to your initial temperature. So, sebelum ni, when we learn from chapter 1 to chapter 5, T sama dengan T not. That's why kita tak payah bimbang. Tapi sekarang kita dah berbeza. T dengan T not adalah dah tak sama. Okay, so that's the challenge. You have to understand. T not is your fit temperature or temperature before the reaction takes place. Okay, next kat belakang tu kamu nampak ada TR. So, apa tu TR? TR adalah reference temperature. Okay, apa tu reference temperature? Okay, if you remember, you learn CPP, you use the Felder and Rossi yang elementary principles of chemical process. Kamu ada guna property table kat belakang tu, appendix B1, B2, B3 sampai B8. Di mana kamu diajar bila masa kamu nak mengambil nilai from this property table, even thermodynamics, kamu kena tahu property ini nilainya dibaca atau diukur pada what reference temperature. Sebab some of this property will change with temperature. So, buku tu akan bagi nilai ini pada suhu rujukan ini. So, katakan kamu nak merujuk pada suhu yang lain, kamu dah kena kira yang baru. Okay, so the same concept. We will use some of this property value which in our case is the CP, heat capacity dan later on delta HRS ni adalah heat of reaction. So, nilai haba tindak balas, delta HRX refers to enthalpy of reaction or heat of reaction. Nilai ini dan juga nilai enthalpy akan diambil atau diberi kepada kamu pada satu suhu rujukan. That will be your TR. So, you will be informed. Okay, this value is obtained, is provided at this reference temperature. That will become your TR. And kalau usually, we will, T, your our TR will be at 25 Celsius. Tetapi tak semestinya. Okay, usually, kita ukur pada suhu 25 Celsius, suhu bilik. But not necessarily means, kalau kamu tengok semua buku, semua property pada suhu 25, tak semestinya. So, dalam question pun, I will specify clearly what is your reaction, uh, your reference temperature so that you can replace in the equation. So, TR bukan reaction temperature, TR reference temperature, T baru reaction temperature. Next one, pergi bagian belakang pula, F is not still the same, X is still the same. Uh, before I go forward, always kalau kamu perasan, equation ni ada bracket, ada sub bracket. So, you have to be very careful because you have all this bracket that will make your calculation a little bit difficult. Right. Okay, next one in your bracket, we have a heat of reaction at reference temperature. Okay, so this delta H, Rx, Tr, uh, kamu boleh, entropy of reaction pun boleh, heat of reaction pun boleh. Okay, tetapi dia merujuk kepada Heat of reaction at reference temperature. Okay, again, dia bukan darab reference temperature tetapi dia nilai ini diberikan ataupun akan diukur pada suhu rujukan kita. Okay, uh, depends. I said maybe 25, it depends. Okay, heat of this reaction, macam mana kita nak tahu atau macam mana kita nak dapat? It depends. Okay, most of the time, practically, if your reaction is a well-established reaction ataupun tindak balas yang common, someone has already uh, calculated or find out the heat of reaction for that particular reaction. So, katakan kalau tindak balas itu tindak balas yang common, kamu google je ke, kamu cari buku, kamu dah boleh tahu heat of reaction dia. Tetapi, mesti faham heat reaction ni kalau kamu tengok Google ke kamu tengok reference book dia mesti akan beritahu nilai ini diukur pada suhu berapa. So kalau kamu nak tahu pada suhu yang lain kamu kena kira balik. Okay. 
Okay, so in the test or exam, the same. I may give you the value. But let's say the value is not given to you. Macam mana apa yang kita nak buat? Okay, so if the value is not given to you and you have already learned this in CPP and I think termo tak CPP you have learned this definitely sebab I taught CPP previously. You can calculate the enthalpy of reaction using enthalpy of formation. Okay, maksudnya kalau saya nak tahu berapa haba yang dibebaskan atau diserap dalam tindak balas itu, I can calculate menggunakan enthalpy of formation. Enthalpy of formation itu apa? Okay, every compound that exists in this world, someone dah cari berapa haba yang diperlukan untuk bahan itu terbentuk pada suhu 25 Celsius 1 atm. We call it as heat of formation. So katakan kamu tengok table uh, buku Felder Rossi, table B1, kamu tengok bahagian kolom delta HF, katakan aceton. So katakan aceton dia tulis the heat of formation uh, let's say is 20 kJ per mole. Before I forget, katakan aceton liquid Haba pembentukan dia 25 kJ per mol. Apa maksud dia? Maksud dia untuk kita membentuk aceton dalam liquid phase pada 25 Celsius 1 atm sebanyak 25 kJ per mol diperlukan. Let's say pula kamu tengok acetic, acetic acid liquid dia punya heat of formation adalah negatif 30 kJ per mol. Apa maksudnya? Maksudnya untuk acetic acid terbentuk sebagai liquid pada 25 Celsius 1 atm sebanyak 30 kJ per mol of energy of heat will be released. So kalau nilai dia negatif, haba dibebaskan untuk membentuk bahan itu. Kalau nilai dia positif sebanyak Haba sebanyak itu diperlukan untuk membentuk bahan itu. So nilai enthalpy formation of each of the compound in the reaction boleh digunakan untuk mengira heat of reaction dia. Okay, so let's again, I repeat. That's why chapter ni tak susah satu equation je. Tapi dia ada sub equation lagi untuk mengira setiap unknown itu. Okay, so how do I calculate Heat of reaction using heat of formation. Kamu just ingat, bila saya cakap pasal heat of formation, dia merujuk kepada kita menggunakan haba pembentukan setiap compound dalam tindak balas untuk mengira haba tindak balas itu. Okay, so again, the equation to calculate the heat of reaction is not given to you. Why? Because it changes according to your nature of your reaction. So, tidak balas berlainan, the heat of reaction, cara penyeraan dia akan berlainan. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, first of all, you have to understand konsep simbol matematik. Kalau tadi bila saya kata summation, E besar summation, dia maksud jumlah. So, kamu tahu operational matematik dia tambah-tambah-tambah. Tapi kalau kamu tengok dalam uh, heat of reaction ni, enthalpy tu saya ada delta. So bila kamu tengok uh, ada tanda matematik delta, it always mean perbezaan atau differences. Bila ada perbezaan atau differences, mesti akan ada yang tambah, akan ada yang tolak. Sebab dia beza kan, mesti kita kena tambah something, kita kena tolak something. So apa yang tambah, apa yang tolak? Okay. Dia adalah, again saya kata dia adalah berdasarkan heat of formation of the compound, right? Okay, so let's say in your reaction, ada dua reaction, dua product. Sebab haba tindak balas kan, so dia mesti dikira untuk semua compound yang terlibat dalam tindak balas. Both reaction, sama ada reaction dan product. So you become D per A, your stoichiometric coefficient ratio of D per A multiply with heat formation of D plus C per A heat formation of C minus B per A heat formation of B minus heat formation of A. So maksudnya, I will provide you the value of the heat of formation or let's say in practical world, you can find from the book the heat of formation, you use it 
to calculate the heat of reaction. So in this case, it's positive for C and D because they are product. It's negative for B and A because they are reacted. Okay, on your left, right hand side, you can see now the equation changes slightly. If let's say I had a satu reactant and I had a dual product B dan C. So what happens to my heat of reaction? Dia menjadi C per A, heat formation of C, plus B per A, heat, heat formation of B, because B is now product instead of reactant, so kena tambah, dan minus heat formation of A. Technically, ada A per A, tapi sebab dia adalah satu, sebab tu kita terus tulis, minus heat formation of A. Okay, so let's say, if you wonder, what happens kalau saya ada inert? Perlu tak saya kira? Okay, let's say kamu confused. Sebab kadang tadi bila saya cakap pasal tita ICPI, kena kira untuk reactant dan inert. Untuk kes haba tindak balas ni macam mana? So, first of all, kalau kamu faham konsep haba tindak balas, heat of reaction, naturally kamu tahu takkan melibatkan inert because inert is not involved in the reaction. Let's say kamu confuse lagi sebab nombor tu ada kan kamu tak tahu kena guna ke tak sebab saya akan beri kamu semua nilai. So kamu kena tahu mana satu nak digunakan pada keadaannya mana. So just think logically. Dalam pengiraan kamu, okay, kamu tengok ada ratio stoichiometric coefficient ni kan. C per A, B per A, D per A. So kamu tahu kalau inert takkan ada stoichiometric coefficient. Kamu carilah dalam persama tindak balas kamu takkan ada stoichiometric coefficient untuk inert. So naturally tak adalah pengiraan untuk inert sebab dia memang tak terlibat dalam tindak malas maka kompa tu tak akan menyumbang haba dalam haba tindak balas for that reaction. Okay so that's how you calculate heat of reaction at reference temperature. Next one. Okay so this is example lah how to calculate the heat of reaction at reference condi uh, at reference temperature so contohnya katakan you you are given ammonia formation and 2 plus 3 h2 produce 2 ammonia okay they tell you the heat of formation of hydrogen gas okay hf of nitrogen uh, hydrogen gas adalah kosong nitrogen gas pun haba pembentukan dia adalah kosong so you may wonder kenapa haba pembentukan hydrogen gas nitrogen gas tu kosong sebab Pada suhu 25 Celsius 1 atm, hidrogen gas tu terbentuk secara semula jadi sebagai H2 and similar to N2 at 25 Celsius 1 atm, dia dah terbentuk secara semula jadi sebagai H2N2. Tak ada sebarang haba diperlukan atau dibebaskan untuk kompon tu terbentuk sebab dia memang terbentuk secara semula jadi at that condition. So let's say dia beri kamu ammonia. The heat of formation is negative 11,020 calorie per mole. So maksudnya, for me, to form ammonia at 25 Celsius 1 atm, I will release 11,020 calorie per mole of heat or energy. Tila negatif sentiasa maksud exothermic pembebasan haba. Okay, so to calculate the heat of reaction, so dia menjadi uh, C per A is 2. 2 multiply with heat formation of ammonia minus minus about hydrogen gas is reactant minus 3 over 1 heat formation of hydrogen gas minus heat formation of nitrogen gas you get equals to negative 22,040 calorie per mole maksudnya untuk tindak balas penghasilan ammonia menggunakan nitrogen gas dan hydrogen gas sebanyak 22,040 calorie per mole of energy will be released during the reaction Okay, right. So this is to calculate how to calculate heat of reaction at reference temperature. Next one, the last one is to calculate delta Cp. Tadi saya kata Cp tu adalah apa? Heat capacity at constant pressure, kan? So again, kalau kamu nampak Cp tu dah hadapannya, saya tadi cakap ada delta, kan? So again, delta macam heat of reaction, ada delta di hadapannya, dia masuk adalah Beza or difference. Ada tambah, akan ada yang tolak. So, kalau kamu tengok formula dia, macam sama macam heat of reaction. Eh? Kalau heat reaction, kita kira guna heat formation. Kalau nak kira data Cp, kita guna Cp. Tapi, yang stoichiometric coefficient tu, konsep masih sama. Positif, negatif, konsep pun masih sama. Sebab tu dia menjadi D per A, heat capacity of D, 
plus C per A hit capacity of C minus B per A hit capacity of B minus hit capacity of A. So let's go to the uh, right hand side. Okay, the same concept, tapi yang beza. The positive and negative. Okay, sebab tu formula untuk mencari heat of reaction, formula untuk mencari delta Cp takkan diberi sebab formula ini akan berbeza depending on your reaction. So you have to really understand when it's positive, when it's negative. Okay, so next. Should we calculate for inert? Okay, sama konsep macam tadi. Kamu tahu dia me, dia melibatkan pengiraan dia involve stoichiometric coefficient punya ratio. C per A, B per A, D per A. So kamu tahu inert takkan ada stoichiometric coefficient it for it because it is not involved in the chemical reaction. So naturally pengiraan delta Cp ini tak akan ada. Okay, so to address Kena faham bila masa inert harus ada dalam tidak ah inert harus ada dalam pengiraan untuk unknown yang mana dan kadang dan bila hanya melibatkan the calculation only involve reactant and product okay is at certain unknown so kamu kena faham formula itu untuk solve the problem okay so Similarly, this example is to show you how to calculate delta Cp. Okay, so I have Cp for nitrogen gas, Cp for hydrogen gas, Cp for ammonia. I know the stoichiometric coefficient. I can use it to calculate delta Cp. Okay, alright. So I think we have uh, one, uh, nine minutes. I can explain one example. Then we are done for today. Right, okay. So again, before we go to the example, untuk recap balik yang saya tadi ajar equation tu sebenarnya kalau kamu perasan saya sedang menerangkan satu equation saja tapi cabaran dia adalah dia ada sub equation di mana the sub equation pun berubah mengikut tindak balas so that's the challenge bila kamu nak hafal pun kamu kena faham macam mana kita nak menghafal dan macam mana dia boleh berubah okay but the concept why I use this equation is either saya tahu reaction temperature I know T I want to find X Or if I know X, I want to find T. Ini salah satu je. Okay, macam soalan saya, either I give you temperature, you find conversion. Or I give you conversion, you find time. Eh, you find temperature, sorry. So, meaning, unknown yang lain semua ni, kamu kena solve dahulu. Baru kamu boleh solve equation ini. Okay, so let's say I give you one example of the question. Okay, so the question says, Following reaction in a non-adiabatic CSTR. Nanti kemudian saya akan terangkan adiabatic. Apa beza adiabatic? Apa beza non-adiabatic? Okay, so this is non-adiabatic. Okay, or in another word, kalau ada perkataan non-adiabatic, Q tu ada nilai. Non-adiabatic, Q ada nilai. Kalau adiabatic, Q tu kosong. Itu je konsep dia. Kalau adiabatic, Q kosong. Maksudnya dalam penyinaan kita, formula kita tu Q automatically jadi kosong. Kalau non adiabatik kita kena kira nilai Q menggunakan equation I just taught you previously. Okay, so this question dia kata non adiabatik kita kena kira nilai Q. Next one, endothermic liquid phase elementary reaction is as follow. Two reactant A and B, I got one product C. So, macam mana kita nak tahu tindak balas tu isotermal ke non isotermal? Tengoklah, sometimes I will write non-isotermal. Sometimes I will write endotermic, isotermic. So, kamu fahamlah kan? Endotermic, isotermic maksudnya ada sama ada pembebasan haba atau penyerapan haba. Definitely, suhu tindak balas dah tak sama dengan suhu asal tindak balas. So, it is non-isotermal. So, you have to understand the how to interpret. It is isotermal or non-isotermal. The reaction proceeds substantially to completion in a jacketed CSTR. Dia kata tidak balas ini berlangsung sampai lengkap. So maksudnya proceed to completion meaning when we say a reaction is complete means all your reactant is converted into product. Itu saja kita boleh cakap secara betul tindak balas tu dah habis ataupun dah lengkap if all your reactant is converted into product. Maksudnya, your X is 100% or in terms of fraction, 1. So, X kamu 1 dalam this example. From the following data, 
calculate the reactor temperature. So maksudnya soalan ni kita tahu X itu satu. Kita nak tahu berapa suhu tindak balas kita. Right? So they give you all the information. They give you heating jacket, heating jacket area. So itu adalah A kamu. So apa sebarang nombor kalau dia ber berkaitan dengan jacket kamu tahu untuk mengira Q. Okay? So dia kata heating jacket area. So your A is 10. Heating fluid inlet temperature, your TA 450 Kelvin, your overall heat transfer coefficient of jacket 150, your U, so tadi remember right, to calculate Q kan sama dengan UA in bracket, TA minus T, so dia beri kita U, dia beri kita A, dia beri kita TA. T kita tak tahu sebab kita nak cari, so T is your unknown. Next one, work done by steril. WS. So dalam kes ni dia beri kita WS kita 3000 uh, kJ per hour. So in this question we are given our WS. Then they give us heat of reaction 20,000 kJ per mol. So dalam kes ni uh, luckily kamu dah diberi heat of reaction. So kamu tak payah kira kan tadi saya kata heat of reaction depends. Kalau dalam soalan sometimes I will give you like this example sometimes you are not given. If you are not given kamu kenalah rujuk kepada formula yang tadi saya ajar macam mana kita nak kira heat of reaction using heat of formation method yang tadi saya ajar kamu. Okay so dalam soalan ni kamu tak payah kira heat of reaction. So next, what else they give you? They give you a table of which the first column is feet and they kata dalam mole per hour. So this maksudnya kalau kamu tahu mole per hour, this is molar flow rate. So they beri kamu molar flow rate of A initially, molar flow rate of B initially. Maksudnya FA not 10, FB not pun 10. Kamu tengok C kenapa kosong sebab dia kan fit molar flow rate. C produk asal C takkan ada molar flow rate dia. So mark that's why F C not is 0. You have F A not, you have F B not equals to 10. And if you remember, kita tahu initial amount kita boleh kira theta B. So theta B akan sama dengan F B not per F A not. So it's 10 over 10 equals to 1. So automatically boleh kira dah untuk theta B. What about inert? You can see in this example, komponen ada tiga sahaja. Two reactant A and B and one product C. Tak ada tambahan kompaun lain. It's safe for you to assume tak adalah inert dalam sistem kamu. Okay, just the reactant and the product. Then you have your feed temperature, your T not. 305 Kelvin, 305 Kelvin. So T not kamu 305 Kelvin. And they give you CP, heat capacity at constant pressure of your compound A, compound B, compound C. Dan juga if you realize in the table, they beri kamu TR, your reference temperature as 298 Kelvin. Maksudnya, untuk nilai CP ini diberi pada reference temperature 298 Kelvin. This is actually 25 Celsius jugalah. Just that, since the unit is all in Kelvin, they give you straight away the reference temperature in Kelvin as well. Okay, so now you have ready all the information. Kalau kamu perasan, uh, kita again kita nak cari T kalau kita tahu X itu satu. So you have to calculate one by one lah. So you go first from left to right. So the first one, the value of Q. Okay, you know this is non adiabatic. Kena kira nilai Q. Q sama dengan UA in bracket TA minus T. Okay, so U tadi dia beri 150 your heat transfer coefficient A steam jacket area 10. Ah, your jacket area 10. TA is your heat transfer fluid inlet temperature 450 T adalah reaction temperature yang saya nak cari. So T tu saya tinggalkan dahulu. So I get my Q as 1500 in bracket 450 minus T. Saya tak buka dulu bracket tu saya biarkan. Okay next one. WS kita dah tahu question given WS as 3000. So kita guna nilai tu. FA not from the question FA not was 10. Okay so we can replace 10. Next. Summation, theta I, CPI. So, kita kena kira summation, theta I, CPI. So, again, summation, theta I, CPI hanya dikira for reactant and if you have inert. Dalam kes kita tak ada inert, hanya reactant A, reactant B. So, summation, theta I, CPI equals to CPA plus 
tita B, CPB. So again, technically ada tita A tapi sebab dia satu. So kita dah tak tulis tita A itu. So we write straight away CPA plus tita B multiply with CPB. So you check from the table, CPA was 51. Tita B tadi kita dah kira kan sama dengan 10 over 10. FB0 over FA0 is 10. Over 10 is 1. Multiply with heat capacity B which is 44. You get your tita, summation tita I CPI as 95. So tadi yang heat capacity A, heat capacity B kamu check daripada table yang tadi diberi dalam soalan. So next one kamu tengok lagi dalam bracket T saya nak cari. T not fit temperature was 305. Suhu asal tindak balas saya 305, 305. FA not again 10. X is 1. Heat of reaction is given. Dalam soalan ni, you don't have to calculate. Heat of reaction was 20,000. So now we calculate data CP. So data CP ni kena kira lah. Okay, so data CP again, untuk semua compound in your reaction of which positive for product, negative for reactor. So data CP becomes C per A multiply with heat capacity C minus B per A heat capacity of B minus CPA heat capacity of A. So when you multiply, you will get the value as negative 14. So CP, data CP can be positive, can be negative. Heat of reaction also boleh jadi negative, boleh jadi positive if you calculate correctly. So what you do is you replace everything into the main equation. So that's the challenge. Kamu dah kena kira sub equation. Lepas tu kamu kena masuk dalam main equation and kamu kena solve equation too. So this is the part is challenging sebab kamu tengok ada sub equation, ada bracket, sub bracket, bigger bracket. So you have to really check and make sure your calculation is correct. And if you do correctly, you will get your reaction temperature as 311.70. So if you have time later on, and this is something that you need to practice sebab pengiraan ni a little bit challenging bila kita ada bracket, enam bracket, maksudnya kita ada sub bracket lagi, ada sub equation lagi, so on and so forth. Right. Okay, so I have to cut short your lecture because you have, and uh, it's already 1.31, already over the time. Okay, so I will see group T2 later on, uh, T1 later on.